Hi, I'm Claudia St. John. I'm the president of Affinity HR Group, and we are your HR partner and resource. So again, we're all paying attention to the big quit and the mass resignation that's going on and has been going on for really the past year. And one of the things that we do know about the past year, whether it's COVID or whether it's politics or whether it's uh, just uh, ongoing work, we know that folks are burned out. And how this shows up for many of us is that we find ourselves in situations or, or in conversations that are uncomfortable. And it gets us talking about emotional intelligence. How can we be better with our emotions? One misconception about emotional intelligence is that it means that we don't have emotions, that we hide our emotions, or that we really swallow our emotions. None of those are signs of emotional intelligence. We all have emotions. We're supposed to have emotions. We were made this way. They are what keep us alive. They are what keep us happy. They are what keep us safe and have throughout our entire evolution. But what we also know is that if we allow our emotions to take over, if we allow our emotions to get the best of us, that's really when we can get into trouble. And if you have two people who maybe have not learned how to recognize that they're in emotional state and don't recognize that they need to process their emotions, then you can have some significant conflict. Uh, I would love for folks to start paying attention and start talking about emotional intelligence. Again, there is no expectation that you don't have emotions because that would be odd. We want you to share with your friends, with your coworkers, with your colleagues, how you're feeling about things, articulate them. But emotional intelligence is really recognizing and having the awareness that you're in an emotional state and having tools to regulate those emotions and taking the time to regulate those emotions before you start interacting with others. So we encourage you to spend some time thinking about emotional intelligence. And if you see somebody at your workplace that may be struggling with this, consider do, doing some work around helping folks understand how to recognize that they are in an emotional state and how to develop some skills and some tools to help them manage and regulate those emotions. Swallowing them, not having them, pretending they don't exist, these are not strategies. At Affinity HR Group, we do have an emotional intelligence assessment called the Emotion Quotient, which is an EQ test. Uh, it's very helpful for folks just to understand how adept they are at feeling, recognizing that they're in an emotional state, and deploying the tools and skills that they need to manage those emotions so that they can interact more collaboratively and effectively with others. So of course, if you'd be interested in that, do reach out to us. We'd be happy to get you whatever information you need on emotional intelligence. And finally, a final word, check in with your employees. Employee well-being, emotional well-being, those should be important topics for you for 2022. As we get through the, the pandemic and sort of look to, to the future, hopefully folks will begin to find emotional equilibrium and, and happiness and joy. Those who aren't, those who don't, we might find them quitting their jobs and seeking other opportunities elsewhere. Don't let that happen to you and don't let that happen to your employees. Manage your emotions, understand them a little bit better and make sure that your employees feel safe and at home and well taken care of by you and everyone that they work with. If you need any help with this, of course, reach out to us, we're happy to help. If you like this content, please like our content, share this information, follow us on YouTube, and of course, connect with me and with Affinity HR Group on LinkedIn. We hope this helps, we hope you're feeling well, and we hope that you have a safe and productive work week. Take care.